As far as the college basketball coaching carousel, before I do some podcast reads and tell you guys where you can find us, all that good stuff. Uh, so we'll talk LSU fired Will Wade. And and you and I never got to talk about that last week because obviously we were out of yep. town. But uh, but yes, Will Wade, before the tournament begins, I don't know that I have ever seen a team fire a coach heading into the NCAA tournament. I don't well, know that I, that's I ever happened. The, I got all the ins and outs and details of all of that. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all got to do with the, the notice of allegations and, and all that. And the NCAA dug up more dirt on Will Wade and the joint bank account and payments made to players out of that and blah, 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 than the FBI did, which is just insane. So, <laughs> you know, I understand the firing him, and you knew eventually it was going to get to this point if they were able to find stuff. But Scott Woodward said... So, I, so I, we, dis- we disagreed. We okay. We disagreed. Okay, no, go ahead. I, cause, because they have stuff on Bruce Pearl, and they have stuff on Bill Self, and... All these other schools have just as much dirt. And those schools said, you know what? We're cool. We're going to give us our punishment. We're going to sign these guys to lifetime contracts. We don't <laughs> care if we got to sit them down for a year or two. They're our guys. Okay? They're our guys. Woodward didn't hire him. Woodward wants to bring in his own guys. He's, he's, he made that clear when he took the AD job. This is his dream job. This is his alma mater. And in Three years, he has hired the men's basketball coach, the women's basketball coach, the baseball coach, which is a monster deal at LSU, yes, it and is. the football coach, which is a monster job in the country. Um, I, I think this is about Scott Woodward taking control of this athletic department. That means a lot to him that uh, Joe Oliva let go to complete and utter shit. And yeah. the reason they had to fire him was simply because, A, they waited this long because when he renegotiated his deal, they wanted to make sure they could fire him for cause. And in his new deal that they gave him, he agreed that that he's going to be fired for cause if the NCAA comes back from him. Okay? So, so that gets him off the hook for a bunch of people say, oh, you paid him for three years. Yeah. And he took teams to tournaments every year. That yes, worked pretty good sometimes. Yeah. By the way, he made LSU a decent basketball school when we've never been even a good basketball school more than one year every five or six years. So um, that's the reason he got to stay on as long as he did. And the only reason they fired him is because Woodward wanted to bring his own guy in. That's it. Woodward likes to big game hunt. Woodward likes to go get his guys. And Will just wasn't that that's it now why fire him right before the tournament because what happens if he wins two games in the tournament oh yeah oh you're 100 right see, this is the problem the only reason you fired him right before the tournament was simply because what do you do if he goes on a run what do you do if he wins three games what do you do if he wins four now all your plans are moved all your plans are done it's the same thing he did with 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 Ed Orton. He pulled Ed aside and he said, we got to make the move now. Why? Because what do I do if your ass strings off three or four SEC wins in a row? What do I do if you go into Tuscaloosa and beat him? Yeah, it's, we already know. Now I'm stuck yeah. with this guy. Now I'm stuck with you. Uh, and, and, and we already know what you are, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, it, so, what you were saying so beforehand. That's the logic. That's, uh, it, that's uh, the reason. That's the science. Yeah. That's, that's everything that goes into it. No, Johnny Jones was the coach at LSU before Will Wade, right? Uh, Will Wade's first year in Baton Rouge was 2018, and they went 18-15, and 15, finished in Ken Palm, ranked number 66. The year before that, 2017, LSU was 10-21 and 21 and number 172 at Ken Palm. The year before that, 19-14, and 14, number 81 at Ken Palm. Uh, they were, let's see, 22-11 and 11 in 2015. But it was this thing was headed the wrong direction. Uh, under Will Wade, starting in 2019, number 19 at Ken Palm, 28 and 7. Number 37 at Ken Palm, 21 and 10. Uh, number 24 at Ken Palm, 19 and 10 last year. And then this year, number 22 at Ken Palm, 22 and 12. He made them a not only a respectable basketball school, but a damn good one that was that was good on the recruiting trail. 
And uh, people can talk yeah. about money and all that, but look, money was exchanging hands everywhere in college basketball. For everybody. He convinced kids that normally wouldn't to come down to Baton Rouge. He found a way to get yeah. it done. Bottom line. Yep. So, uh, Matt McMahon he, is is the new guy from Murray State. And Murray State has been fantastic with Ja Morant and without Ja Morant. And it was time for Matt McMahon to get a big boy job. And they kind of fished around for for some big names, which is what Scott Woodward does. He, he makes people say no. But with the NCAA stuff that's going on around this basketball program, we don't know what the postseason ban situation will be like. We have no idea uh, what anything will be like when it comes to the basketball program. Uh, were you surprised at all that they were able to get somebody like McMahon who was up for a ton of other jobs? Sure. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a really good job to have. That's why. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I think he realized, all right, I'm going to get a a big contract that will be for multiple, multiple years. And if there is some kind of punishment handed down from the NCAA that limits my ability to do the job well, then I have an AD that understands what I've walked into. So I, I yeah. think that's a, a pretty good, secure situation. Uh, very very similar to Chris Mack at Louisville. But, uh, but, I mean, Chris Mack took a ton of money to go from Xavier to Louisville, and it was it was too much for him to be able to handle. But at LSU, I think Matt McMahon will be able to handle this. So uh, there were a bunch of other stuff, uh, a bunch of other moves that went on. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Georgia, taking Mike White from Florida. Now, this is another situation that I have not seen, which is a, I mean, I'm talking blood rival, right? Georgia and Florida hate each other in every sport. And no, Florida did not necessarily want to keep Mike White. He was probably going to lose his job next year if they didn't do something miraculous. But to see Georgia take the Florida basketball coach, like the sitting Florida basketball coach, that was uh, that was interesting. Yeah, were you surprised by that one? Uh, not really, but I don't. You know, I don't. I don't really get into some of the stuff. I don't think it matters. I don't. You know. Yeah. No. 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 I, I, I know these. I know these guys hate. You know, the, the fans of everybody hate everybody. But you know, you're not dealing with the fans. You're dealing with boosters. You're dealing with all these other guys. They're just trying to damn. They're just trying to win. They're trying to do a good job. Yes. Yes. You were not wrong about that. Uh, Florida, in the meantime, has hired. San Francisco's coach, Todd Golden, who I don't know if you remember him, but he was one of the lead assistants for Bruce Pearl when he first got to Auburn 2014 through 2016. He moved to be an assistant at San Francisco, then got the head coaching job. He's only 36 years old, but out of that Bruce Pearl tree, I think he could fit really, really well at Florida. Uh, He did awesome things at San Francisco, so I, I think that is a pretty good move for them. Mississippi State fired Ben Howland, and they are hiring Chris Jans from New Mexico State. You remember when you and I went down to Samstown, I think it was 2019, and you and I sat and watched New Mexico State take Auburn down to the wire. Uh, I think it was a 78-77 loss. When New Mexico State got an upset this year against UConn in the first round of the tournament, Chris Jans has been awesome. Uh, but I was really surprised that, that he took the Mississippi State job. Now, this may just be a money thing. Uh, but that was a that was a pretty big hire, I think, for Mississippi State. Uh, Maryland hiring Kevin Willard from Seton Hall. Uh, Xavier fired Travis Steele, and then they brought back in Sean Miller, who was the head coach there from 2004 through 2009. He went 120 and 47. He had an elite eight appearance and a Sweet 16 appearance there. Uh, made the NCAA tournament four straight years before he left for the Arizona job. The, the other one that I wanted to bring up: South Carolina fired Frank Martin. Now, South Carolina ended the year ranked number 99 at Ken Palm. They were 18 and 13, 9 and 9 in the SEC. And they were they were a pretty good basketball team for the majority of the year, but their metrics were so bad, they got passed over by the NIT and the NCAA tournament. And now Frank Martin is out. And and of course, uh Tanner, the uh the AD at South Carolina, is going to be looking for a new guy. I don't think it's crazy that they went ahead and fired Frank Martin. But uh, do we know that they're really going to be able to get somebody better? I think it, maybe it had just run its course since that Final Four back five years ago, you know? No, I think they made that move. And I think that was kind of negotiating or talked with because they, they fired Frank early enough for Frank to go get a, 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 another job. Yeah, 
I, I think I think the pressure in the SEC has ramped up so much that Frank might just go to you know maybe a little lower level school where there is not as much pressure yeah. and he can just he can coach ball. I think that's what he likes to do, you know. And in the SEC, you can't just do that. So. Yep. So we'll see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.